Welcome to Freedom Church. We are so glad you chose to join us from all over the world. We are a global family of churches gathering in homes, venues and online. We are passionate about connecting anyone, anywhere. Come to know a life-changing relationship with Jesus. In a moment, our event will start. We will hear from around the world, worship together and hear a life-changing message of truth and hope. Let's do church! Welcome to Freedom Church. We are super excited that you were able to join us this morning. My name is Praveen. And my name is Shana. We're so glad you're here this morning. Come on. Whether you're joining us from home, watching online, That's right. or at one of our venues, you are so welcome. Yes. If you're here for the first time, you are our VIP. Come on. And we're so glad that you are here this morning. Yeah. We'd love to hear from you. So connect with us via email, chat with us in the comments, and just get in touch so we can get to know you better. That's right. And also, we would love to invite you to join us and follow us on social media so that you can get to know everything that we do as a global church. We'd love for you to connect on Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, and catch up on all the amazing yeah. content that we put up week after week. One of the amazing resources we have is online content for our kids here at Freedom yes, Church. On. We're on version, and the series we're in right now is up. So there's a devotional on there for your right. kids to read alongside you. Wow. Or search for Freedom Church and you can read up on the past devotionals that are on there as well. Come on, come on. Did you know we have an amazing, yes. incredibly talented global team that puts together such awesome content on, for yes. our kids and that is so relevant to them. This series up is all about kindness yeah. and honor. We would love to connect every child with a life transforming relationship with Jesus. Yes. So parents, bring in your kids Come and on. let them join in on the fun. As a church, we believe in the power of prayer. Yes. That is why we make Come it on. our mission to yeah. use technology to facilitate and grow in our prayer life. That's right. Right. We have a global prayer app which you can download for free. And on that app, you have the ability to have individual prayers that mm. you can make a list for yourself. Come on. You can also join in for your campus prayers and pray for the people in your campus. You can also access global prayer points and yeah. be praying for people yeah. all across the world. Come on. The prayer app has really impacted my life yeah. and the lives in our campus. As you all know, the COVID season has been incredibly hard for us here in India. A lot of our people in our campus mm. got sick or one of their loved ones got sick. And as they were rushing to hospitals or as they were dealing with these situations, yeah. they would send us a, they would put a prayer point yeah. on the prayer app and it got the whole church praying into, into that point or for that person. And then we saw miracles yeah. after miracles, Amen. miracles of yeah. healing and restoration. So it's really impacted our lives. So can I encourage you to take some time out in your day and and connect with God yeah. with prayer. In fact, this month in our campus, we have a campaign that goes out that, that's called Open First July. Come on. Basically, what we want to do is that prayer app is the first app that we open when we wake up and, and start our day. Yeah. You know, a few days ago, uh, Siri on my iPhone reminded me uh, to open Instagram because that's the most opened app on my phone. And I was like, that's not true. I mean, it can't be. It can't, Instagram can't be the app that I use uh, for the most of the time. Uh, but it brought me to reality that that's where I spend my most yeah. time on. So what I've done is I deleted Instagram and in the same place I've installed uh, the prayer app. Uh, so subconsciously when my hand goes to that app, it actually opens the prayer app. So why don't I challenge you this week, like open 1st July, why don't you open up the prayer app? The first thing that you do this, this month or this week and connect with God in prayer. Come on, that is such a great challenge. So why don't you take up that challenge or yeah. set a challenge for yourselves uh, to get more on the prayer app and to be more prayerful, right? All right, moving on now. We have got an amazing message from Saz Thomas this morning. Yes. But before we hear that message, we're going to get into a time of worship. Yeah. And before we get into worship, we've got an amazing creative to encourage and to challenge all you daring dreamers out there. Come on. Whew. 
Okay. Seems these diary entries are becoming a bit of a family tradition. My dad always did entries in this way. And his inspiration continues. I actually remember walking in on him, playing his bass guitar and singing his heart out. Yeah, just bass and vocals. It didn't sound amazing. Most people would find it hard to worship to just bass. But I could literally just feel Jesus listening and smiling. And it made me want to join in. Anna's singing and the songs got better. That's the grace of God. I think that's the first time that I realised how much I love all things creative. Anyway, that isn't the reason I'm making this entry today. I wanted to give you an update on what's happening here with the project in the city. It's October 4th, 2061, and it's finally finished. It's been a long time coming. God spoke to my dad about this vision years ago. And so he's gonna be the most excited to see it fulfilled, even at his age. I'm sure he never thought it would be all the way out here. I never imagined myself moving thousands of miles away from home, but I know it's exactly where God called me to be. I've met some amazing people with some really big dreams, and now we're seeing all these amazing things happening. This is a poor community, and many of them don't know Jesus. They misunderstand him, or they've been blinded by religion. But this is gonna show them who Jesus really is, and they're gonna be able to be a part of it. They've never seen a studio, let alone one like this. It's a center for imagining. We can express and share faith through light and sound and let it go further than it's ever gone before. God has seriously come through for us and provided for us. We started with barely anything and now we have the facilities to make films and do creative projects that the world is going to take notice of. Some of the young people in the city here can barely afford an education, but they are so full of potential and ideas. I really pray they run even further than we have and share this gospel in their own beautiful way with the studio here. I'll update again soon. There is a flood out there, a flood of false things, ideas that damage, fake truths from murky springs. It's a tide of lies. It is drowning the heart and the soul. It cannot redeem or make you whole. We need a boat. Who will build the boat? You. you. Yes, you. you. Wake up. Wake up. Wake, Wake up. up. Put, Put pen, pen to paper. paper. Don't, Don't keep, keep leaving, leaving it till later. later. Dream, Dream it. it. Design it, build it, create it. Dream it, design it, build it, create it. The beds of dreaming become the boats of believing. Steer your imagination to the lust and isolation, to the hurt and desolation. Let Jesus pull you to the shores of salvation and hope with his name in your sails, because without him, it will fail. Have a God interaction. Dream with passion. No distraction. Then take action.
know us. That same spirit of righteous creativity to save. The Ark of Salvation will sail again. My promise in Christ still stands. But the vessel to carry it is in your mind, heart and hands. You are the tide turners. These waters will not destroy but carry you to places and people to save. Hear my prophecy over you. You will throw salt into the wind to season the sea and skies to reshape the landscape of a world so lost. And this time, it's not just a single vessel. It's a fleet. Ask, seek, and the ideas and designs will come straight from the halls of my home in heaven. Start with what you have. Start with what you know. Soon you'll see horizons of which you do not believe. Now, plant and chop trees. Pray, dream, plant, build, release. of innovation, carrying the bread of heaven to cure the soul of starvation, translating the kingdom with the author's inspiration. This is what will be as we dare to dream. Pushing off the limits in this moment I feel your spirit moving all around me Come and have your way I'm looking at the tribals, you're reviving This faith inside of my soul, you're reminding You're calling me the rebels that are higher I can see your face When I say my eyes on 
you know, sometimes I just need to speak to my soul And sometimes I just need to declare these words over my soul Come on, church, get in the groove Run into it, he said he would Fight your battles for you, they don't wonder how you sleep at night Run into it, yes he will If anybody tells you something different, you know that There's a table 
just for you and me. Break the bread and drink the wine. Love is found here. Nothing in between. I am yours and you are mine. You're still. Daring Dreamers, my name's Saz and I'm part of the team here at Freedom Church and wherever you're joining us from around the world, but also wherever you're joining us from in your faith journey, we love that you're here. So if you're checking out Freedom Church or you're checking out who we are or what we think or what we believe, we love that you're here. If you're a first time guest, we're so pumped that this Sunday, you or this day you're listening or watching, you get to see a little bit of what God's like or what God's heart is for you. And we're in a series called Daring Dreamer. And we don't think that's just for the Christians. We don't think that's just for us that believe or have this faith in God. We believe that whoever you are, wherever you are around the world, God's got a cool, uh, epic, exciting dream for your life that he wants you to dare to believe for. And so we're gonna go on a journey and today, I want to talk to you about rising up, church. I want to speak to you that God has got a plan for you to rise up to higher places than ever before, that your time with him, that your life, that your dreams and your visions would go far higher than you could ever ask or imagine. Now, for some of us, the idea of heights in the physical sense is a bit daunting. I don't know, maybe you're like my mum. No offence, mum, my mum can't stand heights. She's never been a fan, you know, glass bridges, elevators, that first 10 minutes on your plane journey. Whereas I love heights, like 
Skydiving is awesome. I've done it once. I was very sick at the end, but it was well worth it. I enjoy your peas. Love the idea of a plane ride. I think to all of those people that Instagram, that kind of classic picture out of the window of the clouds and the plane wing, you know who you are. You are the people that love this idea of going higher. But in humanity, we also have this drive to go higher because we love to climb mountains. We love views. We love the idea of getting to a higher place and seeing from a different perspective. And, and I think that's not just something recreational that's like fun or a thrill seek. I actually think that there are times that we spiritually need to go higher as well as physically. And, and some of you spiritually, physically you might not be scared of heights, but spiritually right now, God's taking you or challenging you with your dream to go to a higher place. So let's talk about and let's look at what it really means to go higher with God, to access those dreams that are waiting for you and to pull them into reality. I want you today, church, to have your head in the clouds. I want you to have this impossible, um, new pioneering idea of the dreams that God has for your life now, something that we've been talking about is this battle over the airways. You see, when we as Christians speak up or when we talk about God or when we step out, there's a fight above us. There's this battle over expression. There's this battle over words. When you start to have a dream, when you start to have a plan or an idea of what God's calling you to, Maybe something audacious. Maybe you sat at the cave and God lowered a blueprint for a business or a career change or something that you really think you could do to serve society. I don't know what it would be. But as the dream comes, we have that day that's like exhilarating. It's a high. Woo! We're all like pumped for that day. But then this battle begins in the airwaves because we have that day of dream and vision and then we have the battle to bring that dream to pass. You see, before every battle is a battle cry. And above you right now is the taunts of the enemy and the challenges of what you think of yourself or things that people have said about you. And your first battle is to go to battle over your personal airways. You see, God wants to do something personal as he brings about this daring dream. So I was praying for you and Pastor G had uh, shared the vision for Salt Winds, which is our vision as a church to expand our creativity, to create film, theater, music, arts and dance that will give the message of the gospel and go far beyond the walls of our Sunday events. And as this vision, as Pastor G was sharing this vision with our campus pastors and our kind of senior leadership team, I began to see a very different vision. Pastor G was sharing about how the, the church was going to go and bring this expression, bring this voice. And as he said this, I saw this vision of our church. And this is what I saw. I saw our church. And as I looked, there was this ceiling a glass ceiling that hovered over every single one of us. And I was gutted. I was gutted because I knew that God had this dream that he was unlocking from heaven. He was loosing something as Pastor G was sharing this vision. And I just saw us trapped. You know, you may have heard the phrase glass ceiling. It basically means you hit what you didn't think was there or you couldn't see. You hit this ceiling of what you could be or where you could go or who you could become. And, and as I looked at this glass ceiling that covered us as individuals, we each had our own glass ceiling, I saw words. I saw words written on the ceiling, written on the glass above every single person. And above each person was a unique word to them. But these weren't good words. These weren't words of affirmation or breakthrough or encouragement. These were words that have been spoken over you as individuals in your past. And I saw these words and I was so mad and I was sad. And I, I could just see the idea that as we begin to take on these new dreams and visions, there would be breakthrough, but it couldn't happen because of the glass ceiling. And I don't know what words contain you, but I know that each of us will have them. We'll have things that have been spoken, things that we've said over our lives 
that are a ceiling to our potential. You see, the battle cry comes before the battle. There's been a battle over your life since the day you were born and the enemy has cried out words that would contain you and trap you. But he's coming for a breakthrough. There's this breakthrough coming. I think it's no coincidence that the previous cave, the previous um, kind of call over all of our church was a breakout call and now it's a daring dreamer call. You see, I think there are four different types of word that come to contain us. The first type of word I think we have is a word of opposition. It's you can't do this, you're not good enough, that dream's not going to work. It's, it's a word that directly opposes a dream or a vision that you've had. Now you will have had words of opposition. You're stupid. You can't do that. You're not clever enough. You're not qualified. We'll have all had words of opposition. And for some of you, as I say this, the Holy Spirit is reminding you, or there's these moments in your history of words that have been said about you that you can see hovering above your head. The second one is outcast. Maybe they're words of gossip that ostracize you or put you out of the camp or out of the group. Maybe they're words of rejection. If you do that, it will never work and I won't speak to you. I don't know what your word of rejection is, but there will be these words that outcast you. And so that those words will contain you because you'll always want to be wanted or loved or in but it contains you, it holds you in, it's a ceiling on the dreams that God has for you. The other kind of word that might be written on your glass ceiling will be a definition. A definition of what you can and can't do. Maybe it's a learning ability definition. Maybe it's a health definition. You know, I was diagnosed, diagnosed isn't the right word. I was told that I was dyslexic when I was in high school and at the time I was gutted, heartbroken but I'll never be able to read. Can I ever read the Bible? Will I ever run a business? I hate writing. I can't write stuff. Could I get a degree? Oh, I don't. And it was crushing for me. But I soon learned that this definition that was sent to contain me or, or hold my life or make my life small or lower or less was actually an incredible gift. But I know there are some definitions that, that to break through, they feel a little bit thicker or harder. Maybe the definition of infertile or the definition of having mental health troubles. Those definitions of you'll never change or this will never heal or this is impossible or it will be hard for you. Those definitions that God wants to smash. God wants to find a way through. He wants to break it and he doesn't want you to be defined by those things that are said over you. But I think one of the other challenging words that are spoken over us that form our glass ceiling can be no words at all. Maybe there was someone that should have said something that didn't. Someone that should have been there that wasn't. That should have said, I love you, or should have said, you're mine, or should have said, you belong, or should have said, go for it. And sometimes it's our nearest and dearest where there's an absence of words that actually causes the greatest ceiling because you don't ever think you're enough to even go beyond that silence. And these words, these glass ceilings that contain us are there to be broken. You see, as I continued to pray, when Pastor G shared the vision and I saw this glass ceiling over all of us in church, God told me something really beautiful. Now, if you're in the world of film or theatre, you will have heard of sugar glass or breakaway glass. Now, we've all seen it, right? We've seen the films. We've seen the action hero who runs and dives out of a glass window. You've seen the car chase where the guy like bashes the window and he climbs out. Well, that's called sugar glass or breakaway glass. And what that means is it's thin and flimsy and when it breaks, it doesn't hurt. And God said to me, Saz, look closely at the glass that covers your church. Look closely at these words that are written above the people, because let me tell you this, I'm going to break it swiftly and safely. God wants to come and smash the glass ceiling. But let me tell you, he doesn't want to cause you pain. He doesn't want this to be a hashing over the past. He wants to come and break those words quickly and swiftly. 
You see, how do we break this glass ceiling? What do we do about this containing lid that we've identified above our life, these words that hold us? Because if God's calling us upwards, if God's calling us to new heights, we need to break through. There are two things we do. The first is we stop writing on that glass ceiling. Some of us have agreed with the words that have been written above us. Oh gosh, we've even added to them. Yes, I'm stupid. Yes, I can't do it. Yes, I'm no good. Yes, I won't succeed in this thing. We've got to stop believing these words. We have to go to war, smashing the glass that's above us and saying, I don't believe you anymore. The second thing we have to do is we have to accept that God is raining some other words from above. You see, God's sitting above this glass ceiling, calling us to new heights, and he's raining down his words. And as I saw this vision and I saw what I now knew was sugar glass, breakaway glass, I knew that this glass ceiling above us was gonna break and it was gonna break safely. And God, I watched God pour his words out. And as Pastor G was coming, as the vision was coming, out poured these words and it was like rain. And it poured and these letters and these words poured from God's mouth and it it poured onto the sugar glass and it smashed the glass. You see, we can do the best we can to change our habits, to change the way we think, to sort of take every thought captive. We We can do all of that. But it also comes that God wants to come and smash the words and he wants to write new words on your life. You see, as the dream begins to happen, God wants to do two things. He wants to speak out the dream. But before God speaks out the dream, he's got to speak to the dreamer. God wants to talk to you before he talks through you. God wants to speak to us. He wants to change our character before he speaks to our calling. And this journey to become a daring dreamer isn't just about what's my next career move or what's my next step or what should I be doing or what's my personal dream. It's not just about job or career or what you do nine to five. It's about a shift in who you are. God speaks to the dreamer before he speaks the dream. He speaks to our character before he speaks to our calling. And these words, this word exchange between you and God, this relationship you have with him is the most important thing. I believe that we're in a transition season, church. We're in a breakout and we're going upwards. We're called higher to more, to greater, to better highs and to bigger things. I'm going to say something quite controversial. I found a Bible verse I didn't like. (laughs) Now, I know you should never do that. I know you should just agree with everything that is written. But a few years ago, God was challenging me and changing me. And as a creative person, I get bored easily and I like pioneering and creating. And I want to do something that no one else has ever done. And I want to do it differently. And, you know, I can't stand having the same meals every week. And that kind of innovative, creative part of me got really twitchy because I read this Bible verse. And it's in Ecclesiastes 1 verse 9. And it's not a comforting verse if you like to create. It says, that which has been is that which will be again. And that which has been done is that which will be done again. So there is nothing new under the sun. How frustrating, how annoying, how, what a ceiling. There's nothing new, nothing new. Don't bother, it's nothing new. You can't create anything new. You can't do anything new. It's all been done before. And so I got so annoyed. I was like, God, I think there is something new for the church. I think there is something creative. And he was like, Saz, read it again. Read it again, because it's okay to question and to go on a journey of understanding, really understanding what something means in the Bible. And Dave taught me this great technique, and it's a technique for reading the Bible and getting something different out of a Bible verse. So you change your emphasis. Now, those that do theater or performance or spoken word, public speaking, you know, emphasis is just the one word in the sentence that you say more. So let's try it. There is nothing new under the sun. Yeah, okay, well, we all know what that means. We're frustrated, we're annoyed, and there's nothing new. Now let's change it a little bit. There is nothing new under the sun. It shifted things for me. I began thinking, okay, God, if there's nothing new under the sun, what's above the sun? 
okay, God, if I break this glass ceiling of thinking that I'm no good and I have to find the answer and that I'm stupid and I won't remember, I have to break this glass ceiling. What's above the glass ceiling? What's above the clouds? What's above this mortal realm? Oh, there's some new things, all right. There's some things up there with God that are brand new, that have never been discovered before. You see, I believe, church, that as Christians, God is desperate to pour his ideas out on you. He's desperate to create in you. He's desperate to bring a new business plan or a new career your way. He's desperate to make your dreams come true. And he's desperate to give you good gifts. He's got this epic dream planned for you. Well, where is it? It's in the heights. It's above your glass ceiling and it's hidden in Christ. There's something above the sun that's new. I think so often when we come to plan and dream and think, we feel like we have to do it on our own. We feel like God's testing us or watching us or marking us. No, he's a co-laborer. We get to do it with him. And I can't think of a better place to get some crazy new innovative ideas than with God. Because he, time after time, has given ideas to the world. He's poured them out. These wild things that exist far above what we can comprehend or understand, he's got them ready to give to you. You see, anyone who's been around 20 years when there was no iPhone and there was no, like, you know, app for your workout or app for watching TV or playing your kid's Cocomelon in the car, all these things didn't exist 20 years ago. Who'd have thought? But I believe that there are technologies that God has in heaven that he wants to give to us for the gospel. Ideas around travel, business, technology, creativity, songs that have never been sung, films that have never been acted out. I just think God's got these cool ideas above the sun where he lives that he wants to rain down if only we'd smash our glass ceiling. If only we'd open our mind and our spirit and our heart that God has something for you, personally for you, to do on this earth. That's a God idea. Pastor G said last week, didn't he? He said, your life um, having dreams is like your dream is one chapter of the book and God's written the rest. I want God to write some crazy chapters in my life. You see, there's a verse in Philippians 3 verse 12 that says this, I admit that I haven't yet acquired the absolute fullness that I'm pursuing. It's totally okay to not be there yet. Actually, if you think you're there, then you're not there because this is a journey with God. Anyway, but I fly with passion into his abundance that I might reach the purposes that Christ Jesus has called me to fulfill and wants me to discover. There are some purposes and some dreams for you to discover. If only you would stop thinking the things that are written on your glass ceiling and start listening to God rain down his words. He's going to rain down his dreams for you. In another version, it says, I want to lay hold of that which Christ has laid hold for me. Because Christ, Jesus doesn't just give us this like ticket into heaven. So if you don't know Jesus and you're watching or listening today, Jesus isn't just this like, I'm sorry, Jesus, I've done something wrong. Please, can I go to heaven when I die? That's an incredible bonus. And if it was just for that, it would be enough. But Jesus doesn't just give us access to heaven and God's dreams when we die. He gives us access, access right now on earth as it is in heaven. That's something Jesus teaches us to preach, that we can have access to these dreams, these plans, these presents. Imagine right now that your dream is with Christ up above the clouds, far beyond this mortal realm, and you get the opportunity to ask for it. And he will give it. That's the beauty of being a Christian. That's the beauty of this journey is that our daring dreams are up there ready for us to simply achieve. They're up there ready for us to simply ask for and receive. If only we'd realise that we've not yet acquired it and we'd fly with passion into the abundance of Jesus and go after it. Now for the daring dreamers I want to quickly speak to, the ones doing Momentum. Momentum is a business course we have here in Freedom Church. Or those that are pursuing business or in the last six to ten months have stepped out and pursued something, I want to say well done. 
And I want to say, I know you're pulling down that dream right now. I know that you are going all out at pulling in and believing for the impossible because there is something in Christ. There is a dream that God's given you and getting it down sometimes, especially practically, is a hard slog. I want to say, keep going. There are musicians that have began to write albums, keep going, release more, you've got something to say. There are young people that want to pursue media careers, keep going, there's more. And sometimes that, that process of pulling the dream down from heaven, sometimes that process is a faith journey, sometimes that process is a skill journey. Like you genuinely just need to skill up and you genuinely just need to practice because there is this dream and this vision that needs to be brought to the earth and it needs to be physicalized. It needs to go from a spiritual reality to a physical reality. And that process is a journey, but I believe in you. You see, we're on this upward call. We're called up, we're called to have our head in the clouds. In Isaiah 40, it says this, he says, even youths grow tired and weary and young men stumble and fail. But those who hope in the Lord will renew their strength. They will soar on wings like eagle and they will run and not grow weary, walk and not grow faint. You see, soaring on wings like an eagle really is going to a higher place. So whether you're scared of heights or not, God's calling you spiritually to a higher place. There's this call to see what he can see, to perceive from his heights, and the call is higher. It's an upward call. But the beauty of this scripture is, we carry on down here, we're gonna grow weary and grow faint. But you go to a higher place, you start to spend time with God, you start to perceive things from his position, you start to go after that dream that he's hidden up there, you're gonna see things from a different place and you're gonna soar. I think there are going to be business people a year from now that say, I'm soaring because I trusted the dream that God had for me. You see, the one thing I saw when I saw this glass ceiling over our people was I really believed the Father's voice was very key for breaking the glass ceiling. And so for some of us, as parents, we need to, we need to speak life over our children and call out those giftings, even if they're creative and we don't understand. Even if they're in a job or an area, or if it's academy, it's something that's different to anything we've done before. We all have this question about the dream, and the question is, when? Like, when? When, God? Okay, God spoke to you at the cave a few weeks ago, and now you're asking God, when? God, I can see the dream, when should I make it come to life? And there's this beautiful scripture in Esther, and it says, for such a time as this. We love that scripture because it talks about this season or this generation. But I think even with that scripture, we can pause on it. Even with that scripture, we can pause on the dream. Maybe we wait for enough time or money or skill. Maybe we're waiting for someone else to be the front runner and we'll just be the support. But God's given you a dream. And, and I looked at this scripture because I thought it was really important. Now, let me give you some context. Esther is a queen married to a king and someone in the king's leadership is trying to kill all the Jews. Esther is a Jew and so is her uncle who's actually also her, her, her adoptive parent. Now Esther has two choices. The dream is to save her people. The dream is to stand up in the king's court and say please don't kill the Jews. That's the dream isn't it? to save a nation, to protect those that are treated unfairly, to look after people when there's an injustice in the system. So she's got this dream. But the thing for Esther is, is if she steps into the court without the king inviting her, it's punishable by death, even though she's the queen. So she's got all these glass ceilings. I could be killed. I, I, I'm stepping up for something that's controversial within his law and within his leadership. I'm, I'm standing up for a, a minority group. Has this ever happened before where a whole group has been changed? I'm a woman. All this glass ceiling. But Esther chooses that this is the time for such a time as this, she's called to go to the king and to save the people and really live the dream of changing society. Now, we could take the for such a time as this and be really encouraged by it. But if you look at the wholeness of that scripture, there's a challenge. You see, Mordecai, her uncle, says this. He says, 
If you remain silent at this time, relief and deliverance for the Jews will arise from somewhere else, but you and your father's family will perish. And who knows, but that you have come to your royal position for such a time as this. Mordecai comes in, he doesn't promise success, who knows? He doesn't promise that she's the only one called to this dream because someone else could arise. He says this, if you miss the timing, God will still do his plans, but with someone else. So I wanna shimmy the scripture a bit, roll with me. I'm not, this isn't heresy. Hey, Freedom Church, if you remain silent in this time of dreaming, if you don't dare to live out your dream, the dream will arrive from another place, but you will miss it. You see, for Esther, the dream was given to her because God wanted to save her and her family. The dream is given to you because God wants to change you and your family. The reason we have to go after these daring dreams isn't for our own personal breakthrough. It isn't for us to feel high and excited about the dreams that are above the clouds that are hidden in Christ. This is not a feel good message. This is an urgent message. This is a call that you have to pursue this dream, this daring dream, because your family and the lives of people depend upon it. Esther's dream had people dependent on it. Your dream has people dependent on it. The dreams and the plans that God has given you, he doesn't give them for you, he gives them for your family and for the nations. And you've got no idea right now, your, your dream may feel small or it may feel like it's in its infancy. But if it's from above the sun, if it's God's, it's got power in it. The power to change lives, the power to change a nation, your dreams have got something in it. And if you don't rise up, someone else will. There's nothing like the sting of having a dream and an idea and then someone else doing it. There's nothing like the challenge of dreaming something up or thinking something and then discovering that someone else is doing it really well if only you'd done it when God said. I want to title this preach. I want to title it Head in the Clouds, Feet on the Earth because I believe we're called to be these dreamers where we really are head in the clouds people. I want people to say that's impossible. We've got to have our head, our heart and our spirit way up in the clouds. We need to be thinking and dreaming of things that God has created that are way outside of what society can see and understand right now, because it will be evidence that it's God given. But we also need to have our feet on the earth because that's where it's played out. That's where your next step is. That's where you will spread the gospel and change the lives of the people around you. You see in James, it says in the same way, Faith by itself, not accompanied by action, is dead. You need the faith of believing these things that are way above the clouds, the faith to believe those things that people say about you are not true, and the faith to believe that what God says about you and the dream he's given you will come to pass. But you also need the action to walk it out next week. And so I'm asking you, church, to rise up asking you to break those words and that glass ceiling that's above you, smash it, tear it down, demolish it, refuse to believe it and allow God to reign not only his words, but his dreams. These dreams that are far above what you can comprehend right now that will change nations. And the biggest thing we've got to rise up is our relationship with Jesus. And if you don't know Jesus, if you don't know the fact that we can go to heaven and receive peace and vision and hear from God because Jesus died on the cross for us, we're welcoming you to come and understand that and discover that more. If you want to know more about who Jesus is and you're watching or listening, check out our website. But if you're in one of our locations, we're desperate to go on this journey with you because we want to see your lives change the way our lives have. Freedom Church, rise up. Freedom Church, break the ceilings. 
daring dreamers believe that God has got something for you to walk out on this earth while you keep your head in the clouds. Come on, rise up church. What an incredible preach by Saz Thomas. Thank you Saz for bringing that. Guys, it's time to get our daring dreams on. Like Saz said, these dreams that God gives you is not just for you, yeah. but it is to impact people around us and maybe even generations to come. So get your daring dreams on. Come on. Thank you so much for joining us this morning. We have loved having you with us. Yes. If you've responded or you've got any questions, please feel free to get in touch with us at hello at freedomchurch.cc. Or you can even respond to us and chat with us on the comments right now. Yeah. And we'd get in touch with you and love to get on this journey with you. Yes. Thank you once again for being with us this Sunday morning. See you again next week. We love you. <laughs>